we had a client submit a ticket requesting assistance creating a terminated employee listing, basically employee name, job title, and term date. We looked at the standard reports available. Those reports provided more information than the client needed and didn't really export in a format that worked well for the client. We looked at Crystal reports, but Crystal reports were a little advanced for the client. and They didn't want to take time to learn Crystal or to have us create a report for them. So we looked at Secure Query. Secure Query is a handy, simple to use option for creating columnar data reports. With Secure Query, you can select the fields you want, sort, filter, and export data easily. To create a new query, once you're in there, you just click on the new button, give it a name. We'll call this one term listing. And then you have access type options. Private means this query is only going to be available to the user that created it. You know, I'm logged in as a master user. That would be the only user that could run this. With a private option, you can share with specific users. You know, anybody that has access, access to secure query, you can click share and then say, hey, this person has access to it as well. Or you can make it public, which makes it available to anybody who has access to Secure Query. I'm going to leave this one private. We click OK, and then we can choose the employee information that we need for this query. So I'm going to choose demographics for the name, HR status, and current job. Um, if we wanted more than this, we don't need pay for this query. If we wanted all the information in the master HR table, we could click advance, and that would bring in every field. A little bit of overkill, but perhaps some of you need that but you have that option. Then we're not going to use it, but you can also choose additional information and relate one additional table to the master table. You know, something like dependents, events, insurance, benefits, things like that. So we choose this and we click okay. It brings us to the next section where we have fields to show in the query. We have the fields to pick from on the left-hand side, and then we can push fields to the right that we want to include in the query. So we want to start with our employee name. So down under the ends for name, we have name, last, first, middle. You could do first, middle, last. You could actually do the individual last name, first name, middle, initial, if you want. I'm going to do this one, double click it, pop it over. You can select it and pop it over that way too. Then we also want job title for this. So I scroll up, find job title, double click. And then the last field we need is the term date. Scroll down to find the term date, pop it over. You can drag and drop the order here, or if you know the order you want as you're selecting them, you can pick them in that order. Click OK, and it brings us to this multi-tab section where we can select additional fields, look for additional data. Um, we can group records. We don't have the need to group here, but if we click this, if we had something like our department in our select field, we could group by department and do a, a count of records in that departmental group. But we want to sort records here. The current record order is typically the employee ID. We're going to choose termination date because we want to sort by our termination date. You can choose ascending or descending. I'm going to keep it in ascending and then click OK. Then we want to filter our records here. We only want terminated employees. So the easy one is set record filter and we choose the employee status code. Down here, employee status code, and we want to exactly match T for terminated. Okay, now that will give us every record in the database that currently has a status of terminated T, but we want probably the ability to filter that additionally, so we're going to add to this. And you have, when you add, you have the option of and or or. If I select and, it means it has to meet both criteria, so terminated and whatever we pick. If I do or, it's terminated or. So if I say, hey, I want terminated or anybody in ABC department, I'm going to get active employees as well. If I say terminated and in ABC department, I'm only going to get act or terminated employees in the ABC department. So I'm going to click and here, or and here, and then I'm going to do, use our termination date for this. Let's say termination date is between two dates. So I can pick a date range here. Now you can hard code this if you know this is the only time you're going to want to run this or you only want it for this specific date range, you can leave, you know, these dates here, set them to whatever you want and leave those. I'm going to use ask later here, which is a parameter prompt whenever I run it, because I'm, I'm thinking when I use this, I may want to run for a different date range each time. And then I'm going to click OK. That's going to pop prompt me for the, the date range here. I'm not going to put it in yet because I want to do my format and how I'm going to do this. So I'm going to click cancel and then it'll bring me back out here. I'm going to open this up click the plus sign and then go to my output results. Now, on this screen, we can tell the system, the query what we want to do with the data. You can see we can just print it, report layouts, portrait landscape, ASCII file, 
fixed length, comma separated, tab separated, so on and so forth. Most commonly, uh, clients use the Microsoft Excel, um, and I, that's what I'm going to do here. So once I choose my format, I'm going to run the query, and it's going to prompt me for my dates. So I do 0101-2000. And 05092024. And then I click OK. It's going to tell me up here it's found nine records in zero seconds. And then because it's exporting to Excel, it's throwing it into this export folder, typically out on your server. But it'll ask you if you want to view this file now so you can say yes. And you're probably going to get this pop up here. It says, hey, this you know has an extension of XLS. It's an old extension on the export process. No harm here, just click yes and it'll open up your Excel file. You can see there's your you know, name, job title, termination date sorted by term date. And then you can save this file, do a file save as and save it as whatever file name you want on your desktop. You know, additional sorting, breaking it out, whatever you wanna do with the data. Then once you cancel, then this query is out there, your term listing, you can run it at any time. It's gonna prompt you for those date ranges and then you can export it again and use that data for whatever purpose you need.